Hello everyone, I'm Joshua Vani from Shaolin Yuja. Today we're going to discuss the techniques of Shaolin's Da Tong Regimen. The first technique to discuss is Jin Sa Fei Jiang Ding Xin Biao Quan. It looks like this. This first palm uses the ends of the fingers to cut across the opponent's eyes, cut both ways, one and on the way back. But it's a very large, obvious move, so you're expecting your opponent to block it. And then I'm left with a bar across his arms. Then I can strike underneath. <clears throat> but why do we strike in this way instead of in the usual manner, with my legs apart? Well, the point is this. A punch is only powerful at its correct range. If he's too far away, the punch does nothing. If he's too close, again, the punch is too weak. It needs to be at the perfect range. This stance, Bingu, uses power by bringing the legs together. So it adjusts range while using power. If the opponent comes too close to me, it adjusts for the range. If he moves too far away, it adjusts the range. If he stays where he is, again, it gets the range correct. All you do is bring the legs together and it automatically gets the range. <clears throat> so this, from the opponent's perspective, appears to be very sudden and unexpected. Now, of course, there is a trade-off. If the technique fails, it leaves you in a more vulnerable position. But all techniques are a trade-off of some kind. The next technique is Da Husha. It looks like this. After you struck the opponent, and maybe you've already hurt him, this hand reaches over him, you pull him across your body, and strike downwards into his head. So this is really a technique for finishing him when you've already hurt him. You can also... The next technique is Kao Shan Shi. It means to lean against the mountain. It looks like this. Now the purpose of this technique is when you're separated from your opponent and you want to guard. The point is to guard heavily to the outside so your opponent is forced to attack you down the center. And you leave this front leg empty, ready to kick. One of the important features is that this foot is up on the toes. This way, the toes act like a pivot into the ground, so the leg can move side to side very easily and the knee is projected. The more of the foot that is on the ground, the less easily the knee can move to protect yourself. So guard to the outside and kick down the center. So the next thing you need to discuss is Hu Tou Tou and the Tiger Face Shield. It looks like this. This hand is held as a horizontal bar, and this hand is held like a catcher's mitt, with the palm facing the opponent. The idea is that when the opponent strikes, this hand palms the strike directly, and this hand comes underneath to defuse it. So when he strikes, you stop it directly. It does not, it does not try and deflect the strike, but crushes it before it's fully formed. This makes it easy to counterattack. If you allow a person's punch to extend all the way, it will pull back very quickly and they'll punch again. But if you crush it before it's fully formed, it will send a shudder through them, giving you a good chance to counterattack. This is to use his own force against him because he crushes his fist into your guard. It's still soft. So when we say use his own force against him, I don't mean you, you, you let him strike out and somehow manage to pull him along the line of his force, but actually to crush into him. <clears throat> the thing about this technique is even if he doesn't punch, if he just guards, this still does this. Even if his hands are down and he, even if his hands are down and he's, he's not guarding, I still do this, I still rotate the hands. That way, this hand hides the approach of this one on its attack. So this shield is very aggressive. It almost hits the opponent with the shield and then hits them with the strike. You strike them with the guard and then strike them with the strike. So it's a way of protecting yourself as you're attacking. It's not a comprehensive guard, but it's a very offensive one.
The next thing you need to discuss is Erlang Danshan, that is, Erlang shoulders a mountain. It looks like this. <clears throat> now the point in this technique is to outrange him. Perhaps I fail the technique, and as he strikes at me, I lean away from him to avoid his strike, and at the same time, I strike towards him. Now the point is, if I strike like this, we, we, we'll both hit each other. But as I straighten this arm, you see what happens? My head pulls away from him, and I outrange him. Even though I'm still in range, he isn't. And I lean my body. So he lands onto my fist. The next thing to discuss is quite a long year. That is, look back and gaze at the moon. It's the retreating stance. It looks like this. <clears throat> The point in this technique is to retreat a few steps from your opponent, a tactical retreat. Now when you're fighting, one of the worst things you can end up doing is when he's coming forward aggressively, one, two, three, is to sort of stumble backwards. Because you, he can move faster forwards than you can move backwards. And people will tell you to circle, and that's a good idea, but there's not always space to do so. You know, we build our world in straight lines. There are straight lines between tables in a bar. There are sidewalks, alleyways, hallways. Everything is in straight lines. So instead of moving away backwards or circling, what long fist, what this technique does, is to turn away completely and leap in this direction. This way you can cover a lot of space. Very suddenly, much faster than he can attack you. You kick your legs up, so if he gets too close during your retreat, you're kicking. You lean your body to the side so he can't hit you, and this hand guards the front. And you look out to one side so you can see your opponent and where you're going in one sweep of your peripheral vision. The next thing we need to discuss is Shong Guan Tianmen, that is, double close the iron doors. It looks like this. <clears throat> From the position Hoi Tlo Wang Yue, the retreating stance, when the opponent gets too close, you can either kick up to him, or this hand can rotate into his face, and this one enters into his solar plexus. So it's from here how to turn back into the opponent suddenly. The next thing we need to discuss is Hei Hu Tao Xin, that is the black tiger steals heart. It looks like this. Now the purpose of this technique is it's, it's not a block and a punch. Rather, this hand swings violently towards the opponent, like this. So you approach him from a distance. You keep your body well away from him. I, I don't want to be hit. And then suddenly, you know, suddenly I attack him. This hand slides up and it hits towards his face. You're expecting him to react, maybe to lean backwards. And as he does, you punch down into his solar plexus. If he guards, Fang Shong, all the better. Then his hands are occupied with my hand and he can't block this one. When I'm in this low position, if he kicks up, again, this hand can guard it and slide up his body. Slide up his body and strike him. When, if you meet his guard like this, you can fix your hand across him and strike into him. So Hei Hu Tao Xin works in this way. This hand is not a block. It aggressively moves towards him. It forces him to guard and goes in. The next technique is Yao Zi Fan Shen. It looks like this. <clears throat> Simply put, this is an arm lock. Now, I'm not expecting you to catch someone's hand in mid-air, in mid-punch, and lock their arm. But there are often times when someone's hand is extended away from their body. Perhaps they're pushing you away. Perhaps they're blocking. Perhaps they're trying to grab you. Any number of reasons. But when you feel their hand is extended from them, you can capture it and lock his arm. The special thing about this technique is I use my shin fa, that is my body mechanics, my whole body, to assist me. Instead of simply grabbing his arm and bringing my arm over, I pull him close to my body and use the softness of my body to fold myself over his arm, like almost melting into him, keeping very tight. So it has this sort of shenfa. I roll around his whole arm. 
<laughs> the next technique is Kai Gong That means to draw the bow. It looks like this. <clears throat> now, this technique, when you're facing the opponent's guard, this hand cups his hand. It doesn't grab, but cups loosely his hand, and I pull it back and strike him. It's that simple. But often when you cut and draw his hand, he will pull it back towards him. You let it go, like plucking a bowstring, and strike him. So you sort of test. Maybe, maybe his guard's even closer tight. I'm, I'm just playing with him, and then go into strike. <clears throat> so this is the technique, Kai Gong to draw the bow. The next technique is called Ye Di Tan Hua, Hidden Flower. The technique looks like this. So what's the purpose of this technique? This hand wipes across the opponent's eyes. The idea is simply to cover his eyes, and then this technique strikes him. You cover his eyes so they can't see this technique coming in. Right? So you approach the opponent in this way. Go across his eyes and stab. Then you can claw at his groin and pull backwards as you strike him. That's Ye Di Tan Hua. The next thing we need to discuss is Dre from Gai Yue, that is, chase the wind and catch the moon. It looks like this. So from the same position as before, the tiger shield. The tiger shield doesn't block grounding strikes particularly well. So when a large circular strike attacks, this hands, these hands move over your head and your head comes into your hands and you project your elbows to the side. So as he strikes, the elbows sort of go into his arm. And then from this position, this hand hammers downwards like this. It just, from this high position, use that force of your arm going around to hit with your hammer or your knuckles into his face. Of course, if he's hooking, then you're already quite close into him and you're worried about being struck again. So immediately, as soon as you guarded one, immediately cut down. This could work. The next thing we need to discuss is Jin Saw, the golden lock. It looks like this. And then Yao Bu Dan Bian. So we're all familiar with the classic technique where he grabs your wrist and you cover his wrist and then lock his arm. But there's no need to wait for someone to grab your wrist. If you grab your own wrist and form this structure, the golden lock, then when I grab his arm, I can still get the same sort of leverage because this structure is extremely strong. There are many locks that all come from this structure. If your hands become entangled with the opponent, perhaps you don't get your lock, then you can break them apart and escape using Dambian. This is Yabu Dambian. From this position, if we're entangled, I suddenly open my, I have some strength, some pressure between my hands, and I suddenly open them out into a hammer fist. One hammer fist wouldn't be enough, but by extending this hand to the other side, I can really push into him. So this is to extract yourself as you've become entangled with his hands. Again, use friction between them and suddenly burst open. The next thing to discuss is Shun Shou Qian Yang, that is to lead a goat. It looks like this. If you've managed to get a capture on your opponent to grab them, you put the hand close to your body and then use your whole body sliding backwards to pull them across you and pull him down suddenly. And then this hand chops downwards into the back of his neck. Of course, you hit whatever target you get. If I manage to pull his arm straight, then perhaps I'll chop at his arm. If I pull his body too far across me, then I'll chop down into his back. The next technique is Qin Jin Za, that is the thousand pound hammer. It looks like this. <clears throat> the idea is this, when you sense that both the opponent's hands enter your space simultaneously, you hammer down on his hands with your fists in this position and suddenly drop your weight, drop your hips as low to the ground as possible. <clears throat> this shakes him off you. And from this position, <clears throat> I lift this hand directly up into his face. 
<clears throat> Simultaneous, uh, immediately afterwards. So as to brush someone off you, to knock their body down. <clears throat> there is another special case variation of this technique. If the opponent is standing with their fingers open, you grab their fingers directly and then do the same, pulling their hips to the ground, inverting their wrists. But this is a special case, it's dependent on how the opponent stands. The next thing you need to discuss is Wulong Bai Wei, that is the black dragon whips his tail. It looks like this. From Chen Jin Zha. One, two, three. This hand swings upwards and attacks the opponent in an upwards angle. It can attack anywhere along his body. So because it attacks at an upwards angle, it's a little harder to perceive and guard. If he guards the first technique, I attack him again. There's no need to go into a very extreme stealing step here. Just a small one will do. When this foot can't advance anymore, I advance with this foot, and I can still make my body go forwards. So I attack, he guards, I attack again, he guards. This hand comes from underneath and physically pushes this hand, strikes it out of the way. So don't think of blocking or, or even pushing, strike it out of the way. From here, even if his hands aren't guarding but he's too far, this goes towards his face, again in an upward strike. And then this hand comes in. The next thing you need to discuss is Dao Zhuan Nian, that is to unravel cloth. Mm. It looks like this. <clears throat> so in this technique, Something attacks you unexpectedly, suddenly, as he stabs towards my stomach. I suck my stomach inwards. I use my body mechanics to physically obey, and at the same time, these hands chop down onto his arm. I use the blades of my palms, and both hands chop, and then I pull away from him to separate myself as suddenly as possible. He attacks, Whoa! My technique covers his whole body, like this, because I don't know what's going to attack me. It's something sudden, it doesn't matter. I cover and retreat while facing him. So it can block lots of different things here, but you're not aiming specifically to block one particular thing. You're just covering the whole range. Leave yourself in a guarded position. The next technique is Lei Gong Fei Tian. It means the thunder god flies across the sky. It looks like this. From this position, <coughs> <laughs> the idea is that we're wrestling, we're too close. I, I want to get his hands off me. So this hand, the first technique actually is Yuan Ho Duan Dun, the monkey holds a lamp. They move underneath his arms to push his arms up, and then my fingers stab into his armpits. This, all it does, it doesn't cause any damage, but it causes him to release his strength somewhat. And then I can grab his hands and move them off me. I pull him down and lift. As I open his hands out, lift my knee into his face and then clap, or into his chest and then clap, my hands on his ears. So this is why the clap is done low, because you've already pulled his body down. There is a more popular version of this technique, which looks like this. First I kick at the opponent, he blocks, I move my hands to strike his ears, he guards again, and I chop at his waist. <laughs> The next thing you need to discuss is Wu Kua Qi Jiao. It looks like this. So I'm not sure, I don't think you're intended to use all these kicks together in combination. But they're all fairly standard kicks. I'll discuss two of them. So the first one to discuss is here. A lot of people are confused about this one because they assume it's just a kick with the heel. But actually the hand is also working here. So you chop backwards at the same time as kicking up. Sometimes in the course of fighting, you're gonna get turned around. So your back's facing the opponent. Perhaps he turns you, or perhaps there are people behind you, or you miss a kick, or whatever. Sometimes you may be facing the opponent maybe behind you. From this one of the best moves is to chop your hand directly into his groin. It's very powerful. But you can't twist your body that far. If you lift this leg, you'll find you can twist your body much further and get a lot more force out of this chop. 
So he approaches more from behind. This leg is up and checks him, and this hand chops into his groin. The other technique to discuss is like this. This is just a back kick. You kick your heel into the opponent's center. You lean your body forwards to evade from his strike and also to balance yourself. <clears throat> like this. Some people go all the way down and touch the floor. So those are the two interesting kicks there. So let's look at the strategy of Tongue Train as a whole. Tongue Train is classical long fist and it's largely about range. It considers the most dangerous place to be is in this plane here at the end of his fist. If you're beyond this, he can't hit you, and or his strikes are very weak. If you're within this, the flight's at a much slower pace. So Tommy Turner is always trying to stay out of this range here, out of this plane. If you feel like your momentum, your motivation is less than your opponent, you try to outrange him and use the long strategy and retreat often. And if you feel like your momentum, your motivation is more, then as he strikes, you crush through. You break through that wall and, and close it down. Now the long strategy involves leaning your body and retreating. The short strategy we can take a look at here. It's from the tiger shield, which can change into the golden lock, Jin Suo. And then when rounding strikes come, Yun Lin, where the elbows come up to the sides of the ears and back around. So these few moves together form a short striking strategy. The important thing is, when he strikes multiple times, don't switch left and right with your hands. Keep him one guard, guarding to the left and right. Change when you want to move or when you grab something or when you want to attack. With the exception of a large rounding strike coming at your head or when you want to duck inside his guard. So that's the basic strategy of Tommy Chan. Thank you all very much for watching. Now, we want to make a lot more videos like this, but we need your support, so please share this video with as many people who you think will be interested in Shaolin Kung Fu as you can, and please subscribe below. If we can get more subscribers, more views, we can make many more videos. Thank you all very much.